Here in the Bay Area, coronavirus testing continues to ramp up, and now some new research is offering better insight into the fight against the virus. And joining us now by FaceTime, of course, is Dr. Stacy Valander with Stanford Healthcare to talk more about the coronavirus. Dr. Valander, thanks so much for joining us this morning. Okay, I know there's been quite a lot of talk about immunity. So if you catch the coronavirus once and you fully recovered from it, you may be immune to it. Is there any evidence to support that? So generally, once you catch a virus, you build up antibodies that help you be immune to that specific virus. Now, the problem is, is that viruses mutate, as we've probably read about, and different viruses mutate at different rates. So that is why you might catch the flu once a year, but you're probably only going to catch the chicken pox or the virus that causes the chicken pox once in a lifetime or once in a few decades. So with SARS-CoV-2, which is the virus that causes COVID-19, we're not sure how long that the immunity that you get from getting the infection, how long that will last. And so I've read rates from six months to 60 years. So the bottom line is we know that it provides some immunity, but we're really just not sure how long. Okay, that is interesting. Uh, tell us more about this seroprevalence test. We know a recent study suggested the presence of COVID-19 in Santa Clara County, it could be much higher than previously reported. What do you know about that study? Yeah, so seroprevalence is this idea, um, it's what they're testing is whether you have antibodies to the SARS-CoV-2 virus in your blood. And so researchers out of Stanford published a seroprevalence study at the end of last week uh, that's gotten a lot of attention. And the reason it's gotten so much attention is, well, so let me tell you what they did. They asked over 3,000 volunteers to donate their blood um, and they tested them for those antibodies. They found that 2.5 to 4% of that population actually had antibodies to the virus. So this suggests that we're, uh, we're not capturing all of the cases. They reported um, we're un that, that we're underreporting or not catching these cases by a factor of 50 to 85 times what we're currently catching. So that's the bad news is that we're not catching the cases. The good news is that this actually implies a much lower mortality rate for the virus. This study has gotten a lot of international attention, as you can imagine, and it's really only one data point in the whole in answering this question of how many people are walking around with immunity to SARS-CoV-2. New York is going to be doing their own seroprevalence studies, and so I think we're going to be seeing a lot more on this topic. Well, we do know that there have been thousands of deaths so far, but many more have recovered. So do we know why some people get so sick and others don't feel any symptoms at all? Yeah, unfortunately, we can't say with certainty why some people get really sick and some people seem to just skate by with no symptoms at all. And that's one of the hardest pieces about this disease uh, that clinicians and across the world are trying to understand. We do know that some factors contribute to people getting very sick. So these are what we call comorbidities. These are people with chronic disease. So that would be things like being, well, elderly, being overweight or obese, uh, having diabetes, having lung disease, being a smoker or vaping. We've talked about vaping recently on this episode. Um, that can be a risk factor as well. So for all of these things, if you have one of those things, you're probably in that category of needing to take extra precautions. All right, well, we do know there's a CDC report that states the coronavirus may be carried on the soles of shoes. What do we know about that? Yeah, this is not too reassuring. Um, so we, we do know that the virus can live on surfaces for a prolonged period of time. Uh, that can depend, the length of time depends on the surface itself. So cardboard, it can last 24 hours. Uh, plastic and stainless steel, it can last up to two to three days. So your shoes are really no different. Many soles of the shoes are made of plastic. So it's no different than that uh, validated report that came out describing two to three days, um, the virus lasting two to three days on plastic. So what I would recommend is really if you're, uh, you know, different households have different rules for taking off shoes, this might be the time to convert to a shoeless household, leaving your shoes outside the front door or just inside the front door. And the other thing that I've mentioned on here is 
Uh, it's it, especially if you come into, especially if you're high risk or you come into contact with public transportation, you may think about disrobing when you come home, throwing those clothing in the wash and then just changing into a new stay at home outfit. Um, and so really that would prevent the virus being tracked in your clothes from coming inside to the house, which we really want to keep a safe space. Yeah, that's a good tip. We've heard from many healthcare workers who do that very thing. So, Dr. Verlander, thank you so much for talking with us this morning. All right, thank you. All right, and every Monday right here on CBSN Bay Area, we have tips and advice from Stanford Healthcare, so you don't want to miss that. Stay with us next week for a new topic, and for today's full interview, you can just head to kpix.com.